This is a quick overview on how to get started using LLM Bench to systematically test language models. So once you're up and running, you can navigate to your interval dashboard, and I'll just go into the LLM Bench page. This is a fresh install, so I have no benchmarks right now, but I can create one over here. A benchmark is basically just a set of examples of the tasks that you want to evaluate. The examples input values will get plugged into your prompt, which will then pass to a language model, and the completions of that model will be evaluated against the example's expected outputs. The benchmark I'm going to create today is going to evaluate the model's knowledge of space. It's more or less going to be uh, questions from an astronomy test. Uh, so I'm going to use that for a name. The next thing you have to decide is how the completions of the model should be evaluated. In my case, I have multiple choice questions that the model is going to have to choose between, so I can use string equality because that works pretty well here. For other types of uh, use cases, you might need something more flexible. You can use human evaluation to kind of thumbs up or thumbs down the outputs manually. That takes a little bit more time, but it's more flexible. Next, we're going to define the schema for each example. You might just have a single value here, like if it's just a question to be answered or a task that you want the model to do but you could also have multiple inputs. We'll actually ensure that the structure of each example conforms to the schema, and you can kind of assign types and whatnot. So I'm gonna have a question, which is just the astronomy question. And I can add other inputs because I'm also gonna have a separate input for each multiple choice option in the example. And so that's my input. And we also define the output schema, which will define the structure that the model should return. We also validate that the, the output conforms to the structure defined here. So I'm just going to have an answer, which will be a text answer to the multiple choice question. By default, this description actually gets passed to the model to help it kind of coax it in our prompt to what we want the output to be. So that's good to know, but again, that can be changed if you want to. So that, that's created our benchmark. So the next step is to add some examples. So you can see that the form to add examples, if I want to do it one at a time, kind of conforms to the schema and reminds me of how, like, what, what those uh, inputs mean. Um, but then I can go through and add that one at a time if I'd like which is great for kind of building up your benchmarks over time. But the fastest way to add many examples is to upload a CSV, which I'll do right now. Um, for my benchmark, I'm actually utilizing this existing benchmark to evaluate uh, language models across a variety of different subjects. Um, they have different CSVs you can download for uh, different subjects. Astronomy is one of them. This is a subset of that existing benchmark. And you can see I've added to the CSV the, the headers that conform to my schema. We'll go ahead and do that. And there we go, we've added 14 examples. So if I go back, I can see that my benchmark is here. I can check out the, the examples, make sure everything looks good. And if I want, I can run the example now. First, however, I'll add a prompt. So you might wanna kind of try out different prompts um, to kind of see what how, how your language model does for different tasks. In this prompt, I'll coax it to be a physics expert And we can see also that we filled in kind of a default system template to kind of coax the model to return structured JSON output. You don't have to use this, but it's recommended for kind of, especially for string evaluation when you want to con con confirm that it returns things in a, in a structured way that you can kind of rely on. So the way we have this set up is we have a system template and an input template, which for chat-based models maps to the system message and a user message, like the prefix to, to for your initial prompt. For non-chat-based models, these two will just get appended, um, but I think that's a flexible way to, to start off. So I'll also do the input here, where I'll actually put in the, the options and the format the questions for each example.
and that should create my prompt. Okay, so I think we're ready to run this benchmark. So first we'll select the model. I'll go with GPT-5 Turbo, and we can select the prompt that we just created. You also have the option to create a new prompt template if you like it. And this outlines what, what we're going to prompt the model with, and then I can go ahead and run it. Let's take a little bit of time. Great. So our model is finished evaluating all those examples. We can see that we did pretty well. There's a few, a few errors. We can check out the details for each. And see, just got the wrong answer here. It still outputted valid JSON, but just picked the wrong answer. In some cases, your model might be rate limited, or you might receive a spurious error, in which case it's probably not what you want, so you can retry any example on a single single basis. So I can go back, and if I want, I can run this benchmark with a different model and see how it, see how it compares, and I can add more examples, or I can create different benchmarks. But that's basically it.